You ever want? You ever wanted to write a book? Not me. Never. Not once. Not even twice. Definitely not thrice. <sighs> How long were you standing there? No matter. For anyone who doesn't know me, and like, why would you? Uh, my name is Ryan LaSala, and I am a author, I'm a writer, and I've written two books, and I've got them right here. <gasps> Bet you didn't think I had them in my lap. This book came out in December 2019. It was a uh, Barnes and Noble Book of the Month, book, of, book Club of the Month Club book. And my second book, Be Dazzled, comes out in January 2021. So. Tonight I wanted to do a video on how I start a new project, how I start a new book, how I write a book, where I begin, and how I get that like kernel of like, you know, like the the like moment for you, how you turn it into a, a book. And if you like videos from like a chaotic queer person talking about what it's like to be a professional writer and writing books and like how I do what I do, then like and subscribe and um, I think there's like a bell that you're supposed to click. I don't know what that is. I wanted to make a video about how I start a new book because I just recently turned in proof pages for my second book for Bedazzled and now I'm at the point where I get to think about like what's next. So for me, most new ideas come to me in like a very strong like visual concept. I typically understand pretty intimately like the aesthetic of my book. What I mean by this is I, I, I have a very clear like cinematic vision of a moment in the book itself. Either a really pivotal scene or a character or it could even just be like the, the general vibe of what I'm looking to accomplish. But a single scene or like an aesthetic or a vibe does not a book make. And I think a mistake that a lot of people make, or I shouldn't say a mistake that people make because I think everyone's process as they're sort of getting started is going to be pretty different and specific to them. So I guess a mistake that I catch myself from making often is that I'll think of this like new idea and I'll jump right into the logic of like the narrative itself. Like trying to figure out like, all right, like what are the stakes? Like who's the main character? Like what's the setting? Like, the, you know, the, the things that actually make up an outline. But what I found is that it's actually hard for me to figure out a lot of those like mechanical details because I just don't have enough like generated in terms of inspiration. And if I'm not engaging with my inspiration, if I'm sort of just like sitting it down and then going off to like tool out an outline, oftentimes what I end up getting is like very blocked as to what I'm trying to write about or like what the point of it is. And so instead of getting started right away, what I'll typically do is sit down and journal about the book that I want to write. Okay, and so like this may sound like vaguely narcissistic, but if you've watched my How I Got My Book Deal video, which I'll link, um, this will be somewhat familiar territory, but like a big thing that has made an impact with me and with my writing process is pretending to be in interviews and uh, pretending to sort of like talk about the book in a very abstract way because, fun fact, when you're in interviews, you can't spoil your book and you're asked about your book and so what you're left with is talking about like the larger metaphors that kind of power you know, the, the emotional journey of your book or sort of like the larger symbols that you're using or like the larger themes. You can't really get into the nitty gritty. And what I found is that with Reverie, I kind of had to back into those. I started with so much like lush detail and eventually as I got older and kind of got my head around what I was looking to accomplish, I figured out what those major themes were. I figured out what the, the, the point of my book was, what the thesis was, what the argument was. But that was very handy when I was then revising that book. And then with Bedazzled, I actually started with those things in mind, what the major themes were, what I was trying to sort of argue with, what I was sort of trying to convey with the main character's journey. And it made the actual outlining of the book much simpler because I understood where I was trying to go. I understood how the pieces that I was working with needed to add up to this like, you know, whether it be like a revelation for a mystery or like the whodunits or what have you and, and Bedazzled, there's no like real mystery, but it's it's still needed to sort of add up to an emotional impact. And I understood how to do that because I knew at the very start of it what I was trying to accomplish. And so the, the process of sitting with myself and asking myself in sort of this mock interview scenario, like, well, what is the book about? Like, what is it about? And I like literally, I literally pretend that I'm like 
on NPR or like I'll pretend that I'm on like Ride or Die or like First Draft with Sarah Any, two of my favorite podcasts. And in like a written format usually because that's how I think, I, I will actually write out like this is what I believe I'm trying to do. Like this is what I am writing about. I think a lot of people instinctively have this information. I actually think that like most writers understand at a really innate level like why they're doing what they're doing or why they've chosen the idea, but I find it useful to actually articulate it because oftentimes it's a wayfinding method. If you're in the middle of a draft or if you're, you know, getting revisions back and you don't really know what that next step is, oftentimes it's very worthwhile to remind yourself what that core of the story is, sort of why you've chosen this idea, what you're looking to do with it. Now, research. Research. And so what my initial like burst of research is doing, it's not necessarily trying to like figure out like the, the very specific things that I'll need, but it's mostly to kind of give me an immersive idea of the, the world that I'm looking to write in so that when I get to actually writing, I don't stop myself from being productive. For Be Dazzled, and at some point I'll probably do a longer video about like what went into that book because a lot went into that book. That book takes place at cons, and so I was attending a lot of cons as an author at the time, which was great, so I kind of had an automatic like into those spaces. But I also watched a ton of tutorials about arts and crafts so I could figure out how to actually build the costumes that the characters were building. I shadowed and interviewed a few different cosplayers. I even attended a competition with a cosplayer and sort of acted as their like personal assistant as they were going throughout their day. And it was great because they got help throughout their day and I got to like ask them a bunch of questions and, and basically write down every single detail that I knew that I may need. I know you're probably thinking like, when do we start writing? And the truth is, I'm probably writing throughout all of this. And this is like, this is a little bit like banana land. And so <laughs> I don't know that I would recommend this, but I will tell you my secrets because that's what I'm here to do. Something that really helped me for Reverie when I was trying to figure out the major characters was writing Wikipedia entries for those characters. Now, no, if, if you like go and search like Kane Montgomery, I don't think you're going to find like a Wikipedia article about Kane Montgomery. But what I, what I basically was doing was taking the format of, of Wikipedia, which I think is super familiar to a ton of people. It has like, you know, early life and like personal life and yada yada yada. And because that format was familiar, it was sort of like filling out a worksheet for my character. And what it did was it forced me to kind of excavate those details from my own imagination. A lot of that information didn't come in handy, but what it did was it gave me a pretty three-dimensional idea of the character that I was working with. And actually some of it did come in handy, like a lot of the things that made it into the book were because I just knew a lot about Kane's past, where he would have been 10 years prior to the events of the book. And it's not just characters that I'll do this with, I'll do this with places, I will do this with like catastrophic events. <laughs> really basically anything that I, that I as a writer could use a pretty good handle on, I will sit down and craft some sort of article on. When do we start writing? When do we start writing? Ultimately, the thing that I find to be very helpful while doing all of these other things is to let yourself write utter garbage. And I know, like, you're probably like, oh, utter garbage. But like, no, seriously, like, the biggest thing that I think is useful when beginning a new project for me is understanding that, like, no word, literally not a single word that I put down in my very first draft is going to eventuate in, like, the final draft everything is going to get some sort of work done to it. Everything is going to be replaced and revised and edited. So anything that I put down is just going to be burnt up and turned into like whatever the glorious thing is that eventually gets published. Maybe that sounds discouraging. I'm not discouraged by that in part because it makes me feel good knowing that like the stakes are very low for those initial like first passes at what I'm trying to do. And so like an artist, I will use my like very first draft to kind of sketch out the the shape of what I'm doing. And so my free writing in the, the very beginning is, it, I wouldn't even call it like a zero draft. It's like very much just exercises and like scrimmages basically in like the book that I'm trying to write. And like any part of the story that I can like experiment or like fuck around with, like I, I will. So like I'll try out different like tenses, I will try out different like points of view, I will try like multiple points of view, just honestly to get an understanding of like what's going to connect with like the energy behind the story for me or what's going to like get me excited to write it. And I do this because what I don't want to do, what I don't want to do is spend a ton of time working on a very like specific version of something only to discover that it's not really what I should have been doing the entire time. And like that to me would be, you know, pretty discouraging, right, to have like wasted all that time. So instead, especially because I'm now someone who sort of has to write towards these deadlines, 
I'll actually allow myself to do a fair amount of experimentation right at the beginning so that I make a choice and I know that that choice is the right choice because I've tried other things. I think if I had to like boil this down um, and sort of articulate what like the underpinnings are is all of this is just an effort to like make contact with the intuition that kind of gave me this idea in the first place to sort of understand at a much deeper level like why this particular story is the one that I'm writing and to, to kind of get my head and my hands around the, the major themes and like inspirations that are that are driving this. And honestly the the more like crystalline that idea, like the more I can sort of make that into like a physical thing in my mind, the better I feel about, you know, all of my really shitty first drafts because even though I know that they're gonna get replaced, I understand that what I'm writing is sort of towards this end goal, um, this like beacon that is very bright in my mind. So I am curious though, uh, for all of the, the people out there that are starting new books, where do you begin? What do you start with? Is it like an initial idea or like a problem or like a specific character? Like what is sort of the first piece of it that you have? And then how do you, how do you excavate? How do you figure out like the rest of it? This is what I'm doing literally right now. Actually, it's not what I'm doing right now because instead of doing this work, I decided to make this video because I'm procrastinating. But honestly, I should be thinking about a lot of these things in relation to my next project. I don't know, maybe I'll get up like bright and early and do it tomorrow. I think tonight I'm gonna watch Star Wars. No. I'm gonna bake cookies and then watch Star Wars. Anyhow, I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for coming to my video and I hope you have a successful writing journey slash session slash good cry in the shower if that's where you're at. Okay, goodbye. All right. Au revoir. <laughs> my bangs really said no. <laughs> the mark of a good bang is that it tells people to shut up for you. You don't have to do it. It's just... <laughs>